Good morning, everybody. Wow, it's been such a long time since I uh, shot a cooking video, but I'm really happy to be doing this one today because cauliflower is in season in Ontario, in Durham, where I live. Um, these are local cauliflowers right from right here in Newcastle. Um, I bought six of them, and I am going to make um, cauliflower crust pizza. This is a keto version of pizza. It doesn't use flour. There's no gluten. Um, it is The crust is based on cauliflower. And I'm going to admit a lot of cheese. It's almost like a second cheese <laughs> version of pizza because there's so much cheese in the crust. But um, there's several steps to it. I have found it's really useful to do a giant batch of it all at once which I then freeze um, in Ziploc bags in one pizza portions, which is about a cup and a half, if I recall correctly. Um, and then I freeze them when cauliflower is not in season. I think last year I put 40, the equivalent of 40 pizza crusts in the freezer in Ziploc bags pre-measure so that during the long winter months, at any point in time I want to make a cauliflower crust pizza, I just pull out a Ziploc bag and thaw it uh, into a cast iron skillet and make the pizza. So um, I'm really excited to be doing this today while cauliflowers are in season. These were $4.99 a head, which is not the cheapest you'll see it. You might even see it uh, cheaper and you might see the great big enormous ones that come up from Niagara. They're like two, they're like two of these easily. Um, however, as you know, in food prep, the key to success is having the food and the time at the same time. So it doesn't help me to have a ton of cauliflower if I have no time. It doesn't help me to have time on my hands in January if I have no cauliflower or cauliflower are $8.99 each or something nutty like that. So um, I got these at a reasonable price. They're local. I'm happy about it. I'm happy to be shopping local. Um, I am going to cook six cauliflower and strain them to make cali keto cauliflower pizza crust and um, you'll see how it's done. Once you get this portion of it done, which is a bit time consuming and um, tedious, uh, but then you don't have to do it again all winter long. So it totally is worth the time spent now and um, I will, uh, I'll come back to you when I've got all this cauliflower cleaned and rinsed and ready to boil in a great big pot. Okay, I've given uh, six heads of cauliflower a rinse under cold water and I'm tossing them all into the biggest paderno stock pot that I have. Um, you don't have, the, that's a half of a cauliflower. You don't have to cut it very small because you are gonna fill it with water. Um, salt the water just a tiny little bit and uh, boil it. For some time, you can go do lots of other things. You can go write articles or sweep floors or do whatever else you need uh, while this is cooking because it's going to take a little while. And uh, then uh, I'll let it cool enough so that I can lift the pot and I'm going to strain it through. Um, well, uh, there's several different things you could strain it through and I'll, I will show you how to do that. If you're just doing one, you could use a jelly bag or cheesecloth. I use actually a great big 100% um, cotton white baby receiving blanket uh, which is it's great I'll show you um, when you're doing multiple cauliflower okay so this is a pretty good size I'm not sure I think it's a 16 quart uh, paterno pot I'll double check the size of it um, I'm gonna fill it with water put a lid on it and bring it to a boil Cooking cauliflower. I hope I can do this without um, without completely steaming up the lens of my uh, of my camera. But I just wanted to show you how soft the cauliflower is. Okay, so it's really nice. It's beautiful. It smells so good. Um, the whole pan has been boiling away like I don't know, 45 minutes or something. A while. I'm sure what's on the bottom is like mashed potatoes now. But even what's on the top is very soft. So I'm gonna turn that off and uh, let it cool before I attempt to strain it and then uh, when I strain it and get it into a great big mixing bowl I'll show you um, what else goes into cauliflower crust pizza. Awesome. Okay if I was going to make one small you know batch from one head of cauliflower 
um, cauliflower crust for a pizza, I could probably um, I could probably fit all the cauliflower that I need to strain into one jelly bag. Uh, that's a Bernardin jelly bag. You can buy them two at a time at Canadian Tire. I use them all the time. This is what I use to strain um, yogurt, to press yogurt for tzatziki. Um, sometimes I actually even use them for jelly. That's the least uh, often that I use. But these, um, if I was going to just do a small amount of cauliflower, I would use a jelly bag. And I would buy the two pack at Canadian Tire. I think they're about six or seven bucks. And holy crow, they last for years and years. They've got a bit of a rubber top. They fit nicely over a, either a really big jar or um, a, a tall pan uh, so that you can strain the water out of the cauliflower. That is important because um, you want to get as much moisture out of the cauliflower as you possibly can uh, before you mix it with the cheese and the egg and the pesto to make the crust. Those, are, those steps will follow. So what I have, um, cheesecloth I actually find the least helpful. This is um, a cotton, 100% cotton. Um, it's a baby. It's actually a receiving blanket for a baby. It's got a really nicely hemmed edge. My daughter says you can buy these anywhere. Usually you see them patterned. I like this one because it's white. Um, I don't have to worry about it being stained. I can bleach it. It stays nice and clean. So um, I like being able to bleach it actually. And I'm using my barbecue basket because it's one of the largest straining items that I had. I could use a colander, but I'm going to be uh, emptying an enormous stock pot full of cauliflower into this. So I want it to be um, as big an opening as I can get it. I've got the baby receipt, the 100% cotton. You could use any kind of 100% cotton fabric. This is really nice and porous and it ties up in a very handy way. So I'm just gonna toss this into my sink. And as Julia Child would say, I'm going to have the courage of my convictions um, and uh, risk burns lifting this pot, which I've let cool a bit. Um, uh, so that it's workable. Um, and I'm going to strain off all the water and catch the cauliflower into the baby blanket. So here it goes. Uh, spirit of Julia, be with me. It's hot. Still hot. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. Awesome. I've got the cauliflower dumped into the blanket line, the cotton lined basket, and I'm gonna lift it out. That's a lot of cauliflower. Um, however, you'll be surprised to see how how it cook, uh, how it squishes down when I mix it with the cheese and the egg and uh, the pesto. So I am going to, you can see here, I just want to show you, I've got, I managed to pull up the four corners of the blanket. I'm going to tie them like bunny ears when this is cool enough to work with. Um, all the, it's going to hang. I'm going to, I'm going to hang this probably from my front porch. I'll go opposite ends to opposite ends and tie it, but I'll, I'll let you watch me do that. However, I'm going to let this cool a bit. So, okay, good. So this is six whole cauliflowers. I might have snitched a bite just because it's so delicious. And I've got my 100% um, cotton uh, baby receiving blanket lining the basket. You could actually, if, you're, if your pillowcases are 100% cotton, not cotton polyester, which doesn't breathe, and which I actually had turned moldy on me once sitting in a drawer, um, uh, you could use a cotton pillowcase, and they're nice and big, and they would hold a lot. But I like this because it. Um, I'll show you when I knot it. It makes it possible to um, to knot it and then hang it from somewhere. I'll chat about that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna go corner to corner, and we will uh, keep it keep the cauliflower safe inside to the greatest degree possible. And then we're going to go corner to corner in the opposite. Okay. We'll make that really nice and tight. And water's soaking into the blanket and coming out already. I'm going to pull up the bottom knot to, um, to secure it at the top. Okay. And then in the top bunny ears, I'm going to make... 
I'm gonna leave a hole, you know, I'm gonna leave a, a hole so this can hang. Now, uh, from the front railing of my porch, I have, um, I have an S hook that is meant to hold on to like a shovel or a rake or something, but I, I, that's hanging off the side of my front porch. And um, I'm gonna go hang this off the porch. It looks like it's gonna rain outside. If it actually started to pour rain rather than Rather, that's pretty stay pretty pretty good. I've done more cauliflower than this and that. Um, if it does pour rain, obviously the goal here is that you want water to be, you want moisture to be coming out the bottom um, of the of the package here. Um, if it, you could hang this from like the faucet in your bathtub. I have hung it from the faucet in my wash tub in the laundry room. Um, I don't put it in the sink because I use my kitchen sink too much, uh, but I could easily hang this over the spigot in the bathtub um, um, or uh, in the wash tub as it is. I'm going to take it outside and, uh, and hang it from the S-hook on my front porch. It'll, all the moisture will just drip to the, um, uh, to the ground, to the driveway. and. The weight of the cauliflower hanging, the weight of the basket hanging will actually help push some of the moisture out as well. Um, I'm going to leave it there for a good solid couple of hours. I'm going to say it's going to be out there for two or three hours. And uh, when I bring it back in, you'll see uh, how much moisture has come out of it and the texture of the cauliflower after it's hung for a while. Okay, so this is uh, the six heads of cauliflower. Uh, cut into pieces, boiled, um, and then hung in this great baby receiving blanket, which is 100% cotton. And um, I'm going to just actually uh, dump it into a bowl here and mix it with the mixer. So it'll be sort of like a creamed cauliflower. It almost comes out the texture of mashed potatoes. Almost, but not quite. It's a little bit grainier. Um, I don't want to, I don't ever cut this with a scissors as I would cheesecloth because I reuse this over and over and over again. I'd like to buy some more of these actually. I guess I could just probably find them online somewhere, but um, maybe I should have done this before I got rolling. Anyway, um, okay, so this is cooked cauliflower. This is what six whole cooked cauliflowers looks like. Now, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to show you the instructions for doing this one pizza at a time. Uh, the, the measurement uh, proportions for one pizza crust at a time once um, and just for demonstration purposes because then I'm going to pull out my hand mixer and I'm going to make a big batch of um, cauliflower crust pizza dough which I then uh, portion into cup and a half portions to be used in all winter long which I'm really excited about. I went through 40 bags of it last winter. Um, I'm sure that I will go through uh, uh, as much or more this winter and um, right now, well right now it happens to be July depending upon when you uh, get to watch this video, but uh, when Ontario cauliflower are in season and they're perfect and they're delicious and they're inexpensive, that is the time to do this in bulk. Okay, so one cauliflower crust pizza using this recipe which I've Gosh, I've spent quite a bit of time actually getting this right. Is uh, two cups of cauliflower. So we'll set that aside and put this elsewhere for now. We're going to use two cups of cauliflower. We're going to use one cup of grated mozzarella cheese. You can buy it already grated, and when I find it on sale as cheaply as I can grind it myself, I buy it, but in this case it was way cheap to buy it in the block, so I ground it myself. Um, an egg, and I actually like to put some pesto in mine. This is homemade pesto that I thawed out of the freezer. I make this from the basil in my yard, and it, it's really good, and it's really inexpensive um, to make compared to buying it. So we've got two cups of cauliflower, one cup of grated mozzarella cheese, an egg, some pesto, I'll probably put in like a cube of, I don't know, what are we gonna call that, an eighth of a cup of pesto, two spoons of pesto. Um, and I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of sea salt because ca cooked cauliflower on its own is pretty dull, pretty plain, okay? So two cups of cauliflower to one cup of grated mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna put in an egg, 
and I'm going to put in what amounts to about more than a tablespoon. Let's say two tablespoons of pesto. Okay, in it goes. So, I'm just going to mash this almost like you're making mashed potatoes. We'll get it as gooey and mushy as we possibly can. good illustration of why you want the cauliflower to be cooked as mushy as you can get it because actually in this case um, mushy is better okay so you can see that is um, a kind of a nice consistency easy to work with your hands uh, two cups of cauliflower a cup of a cup of mozzarella cheese an egg and some pesto oh I forgot to put salt in which is just sprinkles um, this will equal two cauliflower crust pizzas. So mom it's uh, momentarily, I will show you how to um, actually put the parchment in the cast iron pan and make the pizza crust. Uh, but right now I'm concerned only with um, getting the cauliflower, the cheese and the eggs processed. So I'll do the actual pizza pie itself a little bit later. Okay, there you go. Two cups of cauliflower cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, an egg, some pesto, and a little sprinkle of salt. That is a cauliflower pizza crust. I'm going to go to work on the great big bowl of cauliflower now and do the whole thing and proportionally it will end up to be equal. All right, here's the biggest mixing bowl I own with uh, the results of all that mixing. Six whole cauliflower. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, but six whole cauliflower. Uh, and uh, um, all the assorted other things uh, that I put in proportionately to two cups of cauliflower, one cup of mozzarella cheese, one egg, uh, salt, and some pesto. By the way, you do not need to add the pesto. I do it because it makes the crust a lot more flavorful, and I always have it in my freezer. But if you don't have any pesto, skip that. Like, you don't, you don't need the pesto. You really need the cauliflower, the cheese, and the egg. Um, okay, so I am going to uh, get to measuring this out and getting one into the oven. Okay, so from six whole heads of cauliflower, I got 14 pizza crusts um, in individual bags. They'll, they'll get frozen um, flat. It's better to freeze them flat. It makes them easier to get the whole bit out of the, um, out of the bag when you do thaw in the wintertime. So from six heads of cauliflower, I got 14 servings of pizza crust. Um, these will go in the freezer, but for one, and I will use that one to show you how to make a cauliflower crust pizza. Okay, this is the fun part. After you get the cauliflower all done, and I packaged all of mine in one and a half cup portions because that's what I find a 10 inch skillet takes. Uh, could take a little more, but I wouldn't try to do a little less. Um, the oven is preheated to 425, and I'm gonna line this uh, skillet with parchment. Um, the parchment is pretty essential. Like I guess you could do it without. I find it really foolproof proof without the parchment, and I wouldn't want to try to do it any other way if I didn't have to, um, because you do have to flip this halfway through the process, right? So I'm lining the bottom of the skillet with a piece of parchment, and then I'm going to, that's okay, that'll go back down. I'm going to um, dump in the cauliflower pizza crust that we just finished making, and I froze 14 packages this size. So I won't have to do this again for months, you know, months. If I ate a couple of pizzas a week, it would still last me uh, three months, so uh, two months. Um, anyway, so I'm going to, um, with my hands, just flatten the dough to make it as level, as even as I can, so that you don't have very thin edges, which might burn a little bit or leak filling, um, topping, and uh, try to make it uh, as consistent in depth as you can all the way across. And once I have pressed it out to the edges, which is why I wear the gloves because I don't like the feel of the gooey crust on my hands. Okay, then I'm just going to trim the parchment so there's not 
any more than I need dangling in the oven. Okay, so that is the cauliflower crust pizza dough, we'll call it, um, on parchment in a cast iron skillet. Um, I am going to put it in the oven at 425 for 25 minutes. Okay, then I'm going to take it out and flip it over. And at that time, I will put on the tomato sauce, the, the cheese, um, the uh, toppings, peppers, and stuff that I want to have on my pizza. Uh, that doesn't go in the first pass in the oven. The first pass in the oven, all you're doing is baking the crust. I'm going to take it out and flip it. Um, and then put the toppings on. So this does have an extra step to regular pizza. Um, on the other hand, it doesn't have any carbohydrates or it has very, very limited naturally occurring carbohydrates in cauliflower. So um, into the oven, this is gonna go for 25 minutes at 425. Okay, this is the trickiest part. This is where Julia Child would say you need to have the courage of your convictions because we're gonna flip this looks really beautiful, eh? That came out, that's how that comes out of the oven after 25 minutes at 425. Okay, so I'm gonna put a plate and I'm gonna flip it. Whoop! That felt like it hurt. Okay. Julia would be proud of me. Okay, so now I'm going to um, just gently peel the parchment off because we're gonna use it again. Don't throw the parchment away. I did let this cool for about three minutes after I took it out of the oven before I touched it. It's really hot when it comes out of the oven. In a cast iron pan at 425, it's hot. Okay, so here comes the parchment off the crust. Okay, I'm going to turn that back in, gooey side up into the frying pan. Okay, and it's really good if you've got hot gloves because... Um, you need your fingers and you need them to be protected. So, now that is, um, let me just get a uh, spatula of some kind if I've got one here. There we go. Oh, for God's sake. Just to slide that over. Okay. So, um, Here's the tricky part. I'm going to put it back into the pan. Okay, there. Now, ooh, that would have been noisy. For all intents and purposes, now this is the crust of your pizza, okay? Um, so it'll be nice and crispy, crispy-ish when you take it out. Um, and now I'm going to set about putting toppings on it. Okay. Under normal circumstances, I would have my own homemade uh, tomato sauce, fake Little Caesars, but I used all of that, so I'm just using jarred Classico. It's fine. It's a little more liquidy than I would like it. Um, I will make some big batches of homemade this summer when tomatoes are ready to go, and I'll can them so I have them for the whole entire winter. So if you have a freezer full of... Um, crusts in packages of one and a half cups and you have a quite a few jars of um, sauce on your shelf you're, you're good if the world ends we'll all be eating cauliflower crust pizza the world might end but keto will go on okay so um we're going to cover this with tomato sauce Maybe a little bit more than that just as you would a dough crust pizza just as you would a regular wheat flour gluten crust pizza and then just as you would a regular pizza, we're going to put some mozzarella cheese here. Sprinkle it with cheese. And you might find you need a little bit less cheese than you would think ordinarily because the crust has a lot of cheese in it. There's two cups of cauliflower and one cup of mozzarella in the crust. So it's pretty cheesy um, even without doing the whole tons of cheese on the top routine. Okay, that's good. That's, that's enough cheese for me. Okay, I have also some really nice capicolo here that I've been meaning to use up, so I'm kind of going to line this whole pizza. I'll cut through it when I serve it, but I'm going to kind of line this whole pizza with capicolo, which is really good. Okay. Uh, sometimes I take a bag of spinach and I just basically put like a mountain of spinach on because it cooks down and um, it makes uh, for a really vegetable-filled pizza. 
Let's just see if we can get one of those centered there. Maybe put a couple of extras on. Okay, so Capicola all the way around. Okay, that's good. And then I have got also, um, I fried some uh, peppers, onions, peppers and onions, I guess. it's uh, like It was like an omelet mix. Um, you can do fresh. I happen to have frozen and I did want to use them up, so I fried the frozen. But um, this would be nicer, obviously, if the peppers and the onions were fresh chopped. And um, uh, Some people like to pre-fry the vegetables a little bit. Some people like them just to stay on and crunchy. That depends on... You can get a lot more vegetables on the pizza when uh, you pre-fry them. Some of the liquid comes out. So, Okay. So we're going to just... Actually, I didn't think that pizza would take all of those, but it did. So all of those are going to go on the pizza. You can fit a lot more on if you pre-fry the vegetables. So that's one. And then just for flavor, because I like them and you don't need a whole lot, but I'm going to toss on some Kalamata olives, um, which is maybe not traditional Italian, but um, I like Kalamata. I like the flavor of it. So we're going to, I don't want to put any more liquid on than I need to though. Okay. So this, I think this looks pretty good actually. I should get a still shot of this before I put it in the oven. But this is going to go into the oven at, four, uh, at 425 again for 25 minutes. It's the exact same baking instructions um, as when we pre-baked um, the beginning of the pizza the when we gave it the first pass on the uh, crisping the crust. So this is going to go into the oven at 425 for 25 minutes. Um, and when I take it out, you'll see uh, it's, it, how good it looks, how good it is. Um, it'll be a little bit gooier, maybe, maybe, maybe not, depending on, on um, if I cook the vegetables enough. A little bit um, uh, heavier, a little bit denser, and maybe a little bit more soft and liquidy than a crispy crust pizza. But Chef John says, and I think this is actually really a really brilliant um, suggestion, he says, um, don't tell people to come invite people over to eat pizza and say, oh, by the way, it's made out of cauliflower. <laughs> invite people over to say, um, come and have some cauliflower. And then when they see it's a pizza, they'll be so much more excited. So um, I think that's actually really good advice. It, it is a little bit different than the, um, than the dough crust pizza. But if you're on a keto diet, that difference just vanishes for you. If you're missing pizza... Um, this will, this will, this is it. This is good. These are good. I make probably two of these a week during the winter and it takes me a day or two, um, to eat a whole one. Um, I have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When it's cooked, I just cut a, a square, a, a triangle and eat it. Um, so from, a, from the point of view of being on a keto diet, uh, it's really good to have these around and I blow through quite a lot of them and you can really cram the vegetables on even more so than I have done here. Um, so yeah, cauliflower crust pizza on a keto diet. I'm going to pop this into the oven and be back shortly. Okay, so there's our cauliflower crust pizza, nice and crispy around the edges. Still bubbling hot out of the oven. I'm not even going to attempt to cut it now. I'm going to let it cool for a little bit and um, uh, then we'll come back later and cut it and we'll see how it goes. And that is right hot out of the oven. It looks and smells really good. That'll be like um, breakfast, lunch, and if not dinner, then breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> okay, yay. Um, this is cool enough for me to work with now. You can serve it right hot. Sometimes when I do that, I end up having to eat it on a plate with a fork because it, it's um, more likely to kind of fall into pieces. Um, but once it's cool and you can touch it, um, there you go. See, it just lifts right out. No big deal. No biggie. And um, I'm going to cut it on the parchment to make life easier. I'll just cut, cut into it that way. And then I cut it into like six pieces. Um, go for, yeah, we'll go, well, I'll go for eight. Okay, cut it into eight pieces. And then they're just sitting here all full of vegetables waiting for me to eat them when I am hungry. So I don't have to stop working and eat them. And then just to give you... A picture of the uh, an idea of the texture and uh, the floppiness of it or non floppiness of it if I did an okay job okay so this is with 
the tomato sauce, the cheese, the capicolo, the vegetables. It's a pretty, it's a pretty solid piece. Not quite as solid as if it was on bread. It's not hard to pick up and eat with your hands. Um, and I do that all day long. Um, uh, you could put it on a plate and eat it with a fork if you want it to. I leave it sit um, out just at room temperature and then I pick up the whole parchment and throw it in the fridge for the night time if, um, if I haven't finished it by the end of the day. Or if, you know, a whole, if several people are eating it, it's gone in one shot. Um, in which case, I'm really happy to have multiple uh, bags of uh, cauliflower pizza crust in the freezer so I can make two or three at a time because I have several frying pans. So that works out good. There you go. Cauliflower crust pizza. 100% um, uh, keto friendly. It does have lots of cheese. It's not, it's not low calorie, but it is low carbohydrate. And uh, be confident in the kitchen. I hope you enjoy making them. And uh, good luck on your keto diet. I'm so sick of reality TV. I'm so tired of my girlfriend ignoring me. I sure could use a little bit of company some time away from all